If this isn't the most London intro ever, I don't know. Hey, I'm Andrea. This is where I go? Yes. I'm Mike. Hi. Guess what? Yes. That is... Under construction. Under construction, but we are at the... Or across the Thames from the House of the Parliament there, so that's pretty cool. But we're on day two. Day two. It's raining a lot. We paid like... first umbrellas. 50 bucks for umbrellas, no joke. They were 25. It's 40 pounds for two umbrellas. They're really tiny and small, so that's the nice thing. Yeah. They'll be raining all day, which is fine with us. Holy. Um, so right now we're heading to Westminster Abbey. I said it correctly, I think. Um, we had a full English breakfast for breakfast. Yeah. It's pretty good. What'd you think? Uh, a lot of meat, which is good. Beans, which is weird, but. That is actually okay. pretty good. Mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. like things that we would normally eat, just not necessarily for breakfast. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know if it was like a real English breakfast or if it was just we were, we were at a bougie hotel. That's true, because yeah, there were a ton of options besides like the full English breakfast, but it's things that we don't. Scottish porridge, which yeah. is just. I don't, but like congee, which I think is like an Asian, thing. Asian breakfast. So. Um, Hopefully we'll find places in like Scotland to go or other places, but for now we're staying at the hotel and it's free, so we can't really complain. But we bacon. are not heading here, but close to here, and we're going over that bridge. <laughs> we're going onto that bridge, and we'll take you with us. So we arrived to Westminster Abbey about five minutes early, and we stood in a forty-five minute line. Yeah, it was pouring rain. It was sort of miserable, but. Uh... Going inside was pretty cool. It was crowded, but uh, beautiful. And I think where we took footage, you'll see there's not many crowds, but we didn't feel comfortable filming where the places where a lot of crowds were. And I think the most weird part of all of it was just walking on a bunch of dead people's graves. Yeah, most of the people walking around there just didn't even seem to realize they were walking on, you know, people's graves, which is a little uncomfortable, but place was absolutely beautiful. And I think the most astounding out of all of this is definitely the stained glass windows. I think that's pretty common of any churches or cathedrals. Yep. It was beautiful. Um, yeah, there's just too many people was the only thing. If there wasn't so many people, it would have been awesome. Got out of Westminster Abbey and... Like, I know people told us August was going to be crazy busy, but I did not expect it to be this crazy busy. In Westminster Abbey with that many people is not fun. It, no, it's really, it's really not. It's, um, we were like waiting in lines just to go into rooms. We waited about 45 minutes to get into Westminster this morning in the pouring rain, even though we got there five to 10 minutes before it opened. So I thought I was doing really good and mm -hmm. we were really behind. So. Then we walked out and walked not too far. Our next goal was gonna be the Churchill War Rooms. However, the line goes down the street. If we angle, you can still see the line. Can you see it? Oh that's yeah, the, that's the line. That's the line. It's not huge, but the guy was saying it's two hours just to get in. So we don't know if we're going to... Um... Actually go in there ever. Yeah. Oh, we I might try like a different this. day. We'll see. So just now I'm just like debating a London pass if that was even worth it because we bought a pass that gets us into like basically most major attractions in London for free. So doesn't let you skip the line though. Yeah. And even the attractions that the London pass says you can skip the line in have said you can't skip the line in, especially yep. during the busy season. So this will be, yeah, I guess it's TBD, but we but found a really cool little cottage. It's the Goose Keeper's Cottage. It's weird that And the somebody, Royal, I guess this is the Royal Park. It's some guy's job it was to take care of the ducks and geese. So we're heading to weird. the National Gallery. Going to the National Gallery. Which is a really cool art museum and he is huge fans of art museums. And then we're also gonna try to get- Not in, crowds though, so fingers crossed. Yeah, the Beef Eaters Distillery, but we're both not fans of crowds, so I don't know, one day might be left for us, so. Keep on trucking. <laughs> it 
So we just got done in the National Gallery. And this is more for Michael than anyone else. He's the art person. So what'd you think? I thought it was, again, too many people. But uh, there were like, what, four paintings in there that I was like, ooh, that's kind of cool. And I Like there were the... quite a few paintings where we'd like, oh, I've seen this before. But I mean, it was a lot of religious art. Like a lot, like 90% of that had something to do with Jesus or St. Michael or the Virgin Mary. Those were the both three most ones. Yeah, just not a lot of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Variety. Di diversity. diversity. Like the most modern art was even like 1930s. So it's nothing within the past 80 years basically. And really for an art museum, it was kind of small. I mean, you can walk through it and half an hour yeah so we got the audio tour for free because of our london pass so that was really great uh but mine, didn't, mine did not work oh did not work probably should have told someone uh. so now we're going to a more fun experience and we're going back on the underground hey what's gone pro tip for traveling Apple Maps makes subways, tubes, and underground super easy to navigate. Speaking of, let's go get some gin. So the tour was pretty cool. You got two tastings and a gin and tonic. Uh, what I found really interesting about this tour is the fact that all of the distilling and seeping of the ingredients take place right here in London. And most of the bottling and distribution then takes place in Scotland. So they actually bring in the alcohol and the ingredients and then they export it back out to the bottling plant. But all of beef eater making as far as the seeping of the ingredients go, take place in these about six vats plus six we don't see. Okay, so we just got done with the beef eater tour and Michael, what did you think? That was cool. The tour guide was um, new. new. Very fresh, very stuck to the script. So like, while I feel like I learned something, I feel like if we would have gotten a different tour guide, it probably would have been better. Yeah, tour but guide we makes did, and breaks that. that it like, makes and breaks every tour, like let's be honest with that. He was that. friendly enough. He knew what he was talking about. He yeah. Just... And the cool part about it is we got two samples of gin and a gin tonic at the end. So if you really like gin, this is definitely a cool tour. Yeah. Um, for the gin me, and tonic was amazing. They used a different tonic that's from India, right. and that thing was amazing. So that's another thing included on our but London I Pass. Like gin. Yeah, he really likes gin, and I'm not the biggest of fans. However, but that's okay. However, what? You liked the gin that we tried. I did like the gin we tried. I think it would have been better in a martini than with a gin and tonic. But um, yeah, so we got coupons for two for one gin and tonics so maybe they'll right there. make me uh, literally right there oh the pilgrim literally yeah right here so maybe they'll let me do a martini instead of a gin tonic but we'll talk to them later now we're going to equip apparently the english equivalent of target which is primark we'll see okay so we're at our final thing today mm -hmm. and we are at um basically a reconstructed globe theater so it's as close as they could get to the original globe theater and they do authentic recreations um, performances so we are at what show as you like it as you like it and there are literally people standing in the rain to watch that show we might get a little hot we're right under Lights. The lights, but undercover, so that should be good. So, actually, more comfortable than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, but we did get cushions. We have no leg room. <gasps> Let me see if I can. No leg room. Well, I mean, like, if you sweat square, but there are all the people down there, and they will get shown up here.
we're back at our hotel and it's been a long freaking day. Um, we just got back from seeing a, a theater show in the authentic recreation of the globe. And honestly, as cool as it was to say that we've done it, I don't know if I would do it again. Yeah, that's a one time only thing. Um, the seats were immensely uncomfortable. I barely, like this much, barely had enough leg room. Um, there were wooden benches. The guy next to me was like spreading his legs and invading my personal space the entire time. And then we saw the show As You Like It and As You Like It. And honestly, like the direction I think is what we settled on was just all over the place. Like they flipped gender roles, but not for everyone. The costumes were all over the place. It just, it was interesting. And I'm, I'm really glad we went. I just don't know if I would do it again. Yeah. Biggest pet peeve hands down was the director just didn't have a clue what was going on. The costumes were all over the place. There was no, there was no time period. It was, there's nothing, you couldn't settle on anything. They had, uh, they swapped genders for certain people, which is fine, but they did it for characters that you were just like, I just don't understand why you're doing it. And then the characters in the show were gender swapping and they gender swapped the gender swap. So it was like, I just don't, there was too much going on. And they like triple cast some of the people and you're just like, I, that guy's supposed to be this other person. And it was just, it, there was a lot going on and um, it was just really hard to follow. Yeah. Uh, they did a neat thing with two actors who were deaf. Uh, one of them worked really well, I think. Uh, and the other one didn't work at all. I didn't understand anything what that character was doing and just kind of flopped. But the play itself was fun to watch. Mm -hmm. We're fun. really glad that it was a comedy. Yeah, it was, it was real. It was really funny. <laughs> I think uh, I probably would have laughed at intermission if it was one of the historical plays because yeah. I just... Yeah, it was one of those things where you, you sit all the way back and you got to sit up and they had bars in between where your legs are. They were like wooden bars and they were shaped kind of funny. So you, you couldn't stick your feet in there. You couldn't, you kept buttoning up against your knees. It was just, it was, it was a struggle the whole time to just get comfortable. So with that being said, oh, you want to <laughs> show them what we got from that little shop what over shop? there? The stuff that's over there? Yeah, what's that place called? I don't know, it should say it on the box. It says, Joy Through Cake. So, we were walking home and found this cute little corner shop and it literally was just cake. And so these are called Cork Cakes. We are gonna get, I think, carrot cake and lemon cake. They had like a carrot pistachio cake and a lemon cake, but we decided to get the little mini cupcakes basically instead. So we'll let you know how those go, but honestly, we're about to hit the sack and go to bed, and tomorrow's a really another big full day. It's a bit early. With honestly, I think one of the things I'm most excited for happens tomorrow. We get to so, go to eat. So we'll, we probably won't film that, but we'll definitely talk about it and take some pictures. We'll take some pictures. Okay, so peace out from the Cormiers. <laughs> We need a better outro than that. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>